In this topmost question, we're given this molecule, told that it's treated under these conditions to convert into this product. And then we're asked to explain which of these descriptions is a correct description for the results. The correct answer is B. If you want to know why, I'll show you this on the board right now. In this question, I'm given this reaction. I take this molecule, treat it with tosyl chloride pyridine followed by sodium bromide. You guys might not know what that does. I'll put a link here to a video in which I discuss it. Basically, all it does is it converts an OH into an OTS, which is a wicked good leaving group. It's strong enough of a leaving group, in fact, that a bromide, a Br- minus, can come in as a nucleophile and kick it off. That's hard to do. I mean, imagine how lame of a nucleophile a bromide is. Bromide is not a very powerful nucleophile, but if you have a group that's such a good leaving group that a bromide can kick it off, I mean, that is a good leaving group. So that's what it does. Tosyl chloride converts that OH into an OTS, and then a bromide comes in and kicks it off. What do you notice about the steric configuration of our stereocenters at these positions here and here? Well, you'll notice that the OH is pointing to the left in this molecule, and the bromide, or the bromine, sorry, is pointing to the right in this one. What does that mean? What it means is that their relative configurations at those stereocenters uh, are switched. In other words, it's an inversion of relative configuration. I've got my uh, highest priority group pointing to the left here, and now it's pointing to the right there. So the relative configuration has been swapped. You can imagine why that would happen. Of course, the reason is because it's an SN2 reaction. As soon as that group is converted into an OTS, it's now a wicked good leaving group. This bromide must come in from the backside and kick it off, inverting the stereochemistry. What else can we see about this? Well, let's take a look and determine if each of these stereocenters is R or S. This stereocenter is bound to a carbon, an oxygen, a hydrogen, and a carbon. Oxygen wins, hydrogen loses. I've got carbon-carbon tie. This carbon's bound to a bunch of oxygens. This is bonded to another carbon, which means that this group up here is number two. This group down here is number three. I go one, two, three. That looks like it's clockwise, but keep in mind this lowest priority group is pointing towards me. So if I were on the opposite side of it, it would actually be counterclockwise, which means that it is S. Now I'll do the same thing over here. Bromine's the highest priority group. I've got carbon-carbon. This carbon group up here is number two. This carbon group down here is number three. And this hydrogen is number four. One to two to three looks counterclockwise. However, the lowest priority group is pointing towards us, which means that it's actually clockwise if I were on the opposite side of the molecule staring at it, which means that this molecule is R. So not only are the relative configurations of these two molecules changed, that means that the OH is pointing left to the right, which is the highest priority group. The highest priority group over here is pointing to the right the absolute configurations have been changed as well. This one is S, that one is R. So I'll go ahead and write down absolute configuration, and it has also been swapped. So the correct answer to this uh, question is uh, do to do It is B, a change in both the absolute and relative configurations. In this lower question, it states that optically active molecules that rotate like clockwise are what? The correct answer is option C, which the answer is D. If you guys want further explanation on this, I'll link to another discussion on this topic that I have earlier.